Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for a browser using Cocos 2D JS, the light version. This video then we're going to add our Robin to the screen. He's not going to do anything but he's going to appear on the screen hopefully in a position around here. And to do that we're rather than adding him as a sprite like we add here using a CC sprite. We're going to need our Robin to have some specific methods and also a couple of uh, properties as well, which means we're going to need to extend a sprite and create our own version of a sprite. And that's the main focus of this video. Before we do that though, we're going to go into gamemanager.js and just add in a couple more variables. We're going to add a KZ index and Robin because we want our Robin to be indexed and it'll get 100. It's going to go further forward than the floor in the background. And also now we want our Robin image as well. So we'll have our Robin-HD and we'll call this uh, Robin image like so. And I actually want to, add, want to add a couple more constants in for the Robin himself. So we're going to add stay K, sorry, Robin state uh, stopped. And it'll be equal to naught. And then we'll have uh, k robin uh, state moving, so when the robin is moving, and that'll be a 1. And we simply use this to, uh, you'll see in later videos, um, when we, we'll update the robin 60 times a second every frame, it's position. But if the robin is not in a state of actually moving, then we won't bother uh, changing his position, for instance, waiting for game start or something like that. We're going to create something called robin start speed. Y. So when the, rob when the screen is touched and the robin jumps, he starts with a certain up upward velocity. That'll be uh, this 300. And we're going to call this last one then robin and start x. So this is the x position in which it starts. It's going to be 240. So there's some constants added in. And now we need to extend a sprite to create our robin sprite. To do that, we need a new file. We're going to type var and then save, because that will let me actually save, and just call this robin.js. And before we do anything else, inside hello world.html, I'm just going to make sure we include our robin.js, otherwise we'll get issues. And now we can get on with making our robin sprite. So I'm going to say var robin sprite equals cc.sprite.extend, like so and close brackets like so don't get confused with curly brackets and now we can set about extending our sprite so the first thing we'll have uh, inside our sprite is we'll have a state and this will be k robin state stopped to start with and then we're going to declare something called a speed y so it's current speed in the y direction and we're also going to save the top of the screen, which will be actually set up uh, later on when we initialize the Robin, but we won't do that in this video. So the constructor itself then uh, for the Robin function, and then this takes in the sprite frame name, so or just the file name, it could be as well. I've called it frame name, but I suppose technically it's a file name, doesn't really matter. And inside here, the first thing we want to do, because it's the sprite, we need to make sure we call uh, super with this actual frame name, otherwise we're going to get issues, i.e. it won't appear. And that's what we actually need to do inside the uh, constructor. The next function we want is we're going to have an update robin function. But for this actual function, I'm not actually, it's going to take in delta time, so the time since the last update, and that will be looked at in later videos with scheduling, up, updating each uh, each frame. We're not actually going to do anything with this function in this video, but we'll have it there as a placeholder. We're going to have a reset function where we reset the robin as well. And again, this reset function is going to be for now empty. We're just, oops, we're just, sorry about that. We're just setting it up. I don't know whether you saw anything then on the screen or not, but I hit the Windows key by accident and everything disappeared. I don't, I'm not sure what was recorded by this recording software. And then we'll have another function called set start speed, which again is simply a placeholder here. In fact, I'll just... Uh, 
copy and paste this like so. And last but not least, we're going to have one called Tube Collision Box. And I'll quickly explain now what these functions are, even though they don't have any content yet. So what will happen is, when the game's actually running, inside the game layer, there will be an update function called once a frame, so around 60 frames a second, hopefully. And each time we call that, we'll call our update Robin. And we'll check to test whether the state is moving. And if it is, we'll update the position our Robin is according to its current speed in the Y direction and the amount of time that's passed at that speed. So very simple velocity calculation. We'll also have a gravity in there which pulls it down towards the floor, which is why we have to keep tapping the screen to keep the robin in the air. Reset resets the robin to its start position. Set start speed simply sets its current speed at its uh, robin start speed, which was declared in Game Manager here, start speed Y. And that's really all we need actually to manage the robin. The tube collision box is a little bit of a hack you'll know if you did the C++ series where rather than using the bounding box of the robin because it's a circle we want to actually make the square that surrounds the robin a bit smaller for when detecting collisions but I'll talk about that uh, later on when we get around to actually doing that. So for now we've extended our robin sprite and we can actually draw our robin then on the screen just as we do a normal sprite inside um, our game. So going into game.js then we want to create a robin so we're going to say this and dot and underscore robin and now we can say that it is equal to and we want to say new and robin sprite and then we want to use resources and robin underscore image like so which calls our correct robin image and what we'll do then is we'll say that this and dot robin dot x is equal to and now we want to use our k robin start x just copy and paste that to be lazy the i could also call set position of course on this but i've done it this way the robin y will be equal to the height divided by two is going to go in the middle of the screen like so and all we need to do is now add the robin as a child so I'll just say add child this robin and get the k index robin to put him on the front and that's actually all we need to do to add the robin to the screen so I'll just bring up the browser again and just refresh and now you can see that we've got our robin on the screen waiting and ready to go when I tap the screen nothing actually happens but the robin himself is sitting there waiting for action so quick and short uh, video, but um, as you can see, it's very fairly easy to, um, inside the the API to extend an object. In this case, the sprite, add some properties and some functions in. And next video, we'll actually look at getting the robin to bounce up and down as we touch the screen. So thanks very much for watching, and see you in the next one.